Today, uh, we are going to cover, uh, first of all, the history of the portal replacement project, um, give folks a little background as to how we got to uh, where we are today. Um, and then we will be uh, showing you the, fe the main features that we're planning on rolling out uh, with this first wave of the new portal, um, some information about the schedule, and uh, then, as Alex mentioned, we'll open it up uh, for question and answer. So um, over the course of the last oh, year and a half or so, um, we have been going through a process of gathering feedback about uh, the current portal and what uh, people like and don't like about, about it and what ideas they had for new features. Um, many of you may have participated in the focus group meetings that we did during the assessment in December 2019 uh, through March of 2020. And uh, we tried to talk to as many different diverse groups at the university as possible, people in administrative offices, uh, faculty roles, student, uh, student life, um, et cetera, uh, IT, uh, to get a better understanding of, uh, as we replace the portal technology, what would be the best features to keep and what would be uh, new features that the university community would find uh, valuable to have in a portal. The next uh, phase in the process was to build a proof of concept version of the system. So um, SharePoint and Microsoft 365 were the technologies that were selected to host the new portal um, and also the replacement for the single sign-on technology. And in June uh, through September of last year, we did a proof of concept setup. So we basically built a version of it that we uh, tested with different groups in IT and the web committee to uh, see if that would be a viable technology to host the new portal on. Um, that testing went very well. We got a lot of uh, really positive feedback. And so now we are in the process of implementing the first release of the portal. Um, we uh, are, uh, have completed development and we are in a testing and training process right now and are uh, working to launch the new portal uh, over the spring break uh, uh, holiday. So as we were going through the assessment process and um, interviewing different focus groups, the primary features uh, that people were getting the most use out of in the current My Cal State LA portal um, was the quick launch. And uh, in general, the ease of accessing it from uh, any uh, internet connection. So the quick launch is the section of the page that currently uh, runs down the left side of the My Cal State LA portal. Um, it grants people the ability to access a wide variety of university systems. Um, and uh, this by far was, was what people used when they came to the portal. Um, and uh, so we wanna make sure to keep it and its functionality as we uh, move into the new portal. And we'll see in a minute um, how we've incorporated this in the new portal. Other new ideas um, that uh, people had uh, about the portal as we talked to them in the focus groups, um, first off was a interest in having a more consistent login experience. Uh, right now, depending on what syst university system you access, you have um, a couple of different login pages and, and formats for your login. And uh, an important part of changing over to the new portal and also the new um, single sign-on technology is to uh, have a more unified login experience. So you don't have to guess which system you're logging into and what format that should be in. There was also a lot of interest in having uh, more up-to-date, more regularly refreshed and more engaging news and events and announcements information on the portal. Um, the current portal does have a, a space for putting news, um, but sometimes that news uh, can be outdated and it isn't uh, sort of filtered as, as well as um, many of the focus group participants would like. Um, People uh, want to keep the quick launch, uh, but the feedback that we got was they'd like a more modern uh, display that looked more like a, um, you know, the websites uh, that companies put up today and have more context information in the quick launch. So, for example, categorizing the different applications based off of the kind of 
uh, application they were, and also having uh, more description about what those uh, quick launch applications could be used for. We got the feedback that uh, users would like more uh, alert information. So uh, if there is a uh, critical event or important information that um, people need as they're uh, visiting the university or working with the university, that they would want to see that pop up as soon as they get onto the portal website. Um, so folks are stay in the know about um, you know, emergency and critical information that's going on. Um, while the current portal is accessible via mobile devices, um, it, if you uh, use it from a smartphone, um, you need to do a lot of pinching and scrolling. And so in general, uh, because uh, the use of mobile devices is so common now, people wanted a better mobile experience um, to be able to interact with it uh, you know, more naturally through a mobile device. Uh, similarly, um, an improved um, accessibility experience um, for campus members who uh, have visual impairments. Um, this was a, a critical uh, requirement that came up from multiple focus groups that the portal uh, is an important tool for all members of the university, so should work for all members of the university. Um, having search functionality available, um, ha giving people a search box where they can um, find information that's not immediately um, on the homepage was important. Um, being able to portalize, uh, sorry, personalize your portal experience. Um, so uh, picking and choosing the kind of content that shows on your portal homepage um, was an idea that was brought up by many groups. And lastly, um, the ability to get an aggregated university calendar or come to one place to be able to see um, information of, uh, about a university events that are uh, being hosted or promoted by many different groups. So these were the most popular ideas that came out of the assessment. Um, not all of them have been included in the first release of the new portal. Um, we have addressed um, making sure we have um, uh, all of the functionality that the uh, current portal provides and some of the new functionality that was requested um, that we could get done within the timeline. Uh, there will be uh, future releases to the portal to add additional functionality over time um, and also opportunities to provide more feedback once it goes live um, to request new functionality. Um, some folks might be asking why was uh, SharePoint and Microsoft 365 chosen as the technology to host the new portal? Um, and there's a few different reasons. Um, first off, um, as a um, using Microsoft Azure as the single sign-on technology is going to allow us to include a larger collection of applications in the single sign-on process. Um, so, uh, you know, going back to that, wanting to create a more unified login experience, um, Microsoft 365 and Azure is going to allow us to do that. So as the new portal website comes online, so too will the new SSO, uh, single sign-on authentication come online. Um, Building the portal uh, within Microsoft 365 will also make it directly integrated with all of the other Office products that are in use at the university. Um, things like Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Microsoft Teams um, will all be uh, integrated and in part of the portal experience uh, by hosting the portal website there. Um, Next, uh, the way that the website uh, is hosted within SharePoint will allow us to have um, not just one portal homepage, but have many pages and many sites that can be used by um, different colleges and divisions to participate in the portal and share information with um, uh, the, the campus community without putting it on the public website. Um, People can only access the SharePoint site if they have a calstatela.edu login. Um, and so this will now create a, a richer website that will have content, not just the portal homepage, but uh, many different uh, resources from different colleges and divisions. Um, next up, SharePoint, using a SharePoint site will allow us to do uh, what's called audience targeting. Audience targeting is where we um, use somebody's role at the university 
or their college or division affiliation to um, show or hide content from them. So for example, um, we will be able to uh, target a particular news article to either um, all campus uh, community members or to just students or to just members of a particular college or division. The same thing will be true with navigation links and quick launch uh, links. Um, and this is functionality that's built in to SharePoint. Um, and lastly, uh, SharePoint um, Online and uh, Microsoft 365 are hosted in the Microsoft Cloud, um, which is heavily protected from downtime. Um, it has a great deal of redundancy uh, built into it. So um, we can assure that a critical university resource, the, you know, the portal is up um, nearly 100% of the time. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the uh, key features that will be coming online when the portal launches uh, late next month. Um, first, a screenshot of what the homepage is going to look like. So um, at the very top of the screen, uh, this black bar is um, the Office 365 suite bar. So if any of you currently use SharePoint or Outlook Web Access, uh, you'll be familiar with this bar already. Um, it's got the search box that allows you to search through uh, the contents in the site um, and also the app launcher on the far left corner that takes you to, to different Office 365 apps. Uh, you'll then have two navigation bars, uh, this yellow bar and the gray bar will provide you with a number of links to different uh, pages and resources and information um, that um, hopefully is uh, relevant and interesting uh, to you. The yellow bar, uh, what we call uh, the portal or hub navigation, will be the same um, regardless of what part of the portal you're on. Um, the gray bar is specific to the area of the portal that you're on. So the yellow bar will remain the same, but the gray bar will change as you navigate from page to page to provide um, the appropriate information. This teal bar right here is uh, the area where you'll see alerts. Um, so if, if there is an informational or emergency alert posted, it'll show right here under the header. And then on the left-hand side of the page, we'll have the quick launch. And in the main body of the page um, will be the news feed uh, that um, where you'll see uh, the most recent news articles. So let's break each of those down into a little more detail. So your sign in experience, um, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be uh, moving everything to the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 login experience. So when the new portal goes online, you'll start logging in with the same page and the same format that you currently use for uh, your Outlook uh, or email web access login. Um, this will become the login for all of the different quick launch applications. So things like Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams, um, Get, Canvas, uh, the different software download sites, HRM, CFS, absence management, and other administrative um, web applications will all start to use the um, Office 365 login page. At the same time uh, that we roll out the portal and we change the SSO technology over to Microsoft um, Azure, we will also be implementing the Duo two-step verification uh, for all login purposes. Uh, so this is enhancing secure our security um, a little bit. Once you're logged into the portal, um, as I mentioned, you'll have two different navigation bars. Um, one that is uh, consistent throughout the entire portal. The other uh, that will change as you move from page to page and um, from the main homepage into different division and college sites. The links that will show in the navigation are audience targeted. So um, what you might see when you log into the portal in your links uh, may be different than your colleagues um, or uh, another student or faculty members um, and uh, should allow for uh, a tailored experience that matches um, people's role at the university. 
Um, also, links uh, will be changing over time. So um, as new information comes online, new resource pages, um, new systems, um, et cetera, they'll be added into these navigation bars uh, by the, uh, the folks that are maintaining that part of the portal. Um, the uh, alert feature, as I mentioned, is going to show as a bar uh, right underneath the site navigation. Uh, and in some cases, there, uh, in some periods of time, there may be no alerts that are being shared. Um, at other points, there might be a single alert or there could be multiple alerts going on. Um, the uh, alerts will be color coded. So um, emergency alerts will show uh, with a red background while important informational alerts will show with a teal background. And um, once you've been, uh, once you've gone to the portal and an alert has been displayed to you, you can choose to um, dismiss or mute it by clicking the close button on the alert. Um, so, um, you know, you, you have the opportunity to see the information and then once you've seen it, you can get it out of the way and you can interact with the rest of the portal page. Um, the quick launch is an area where uh, we've made sure to add um, as much functionality as possible because that's an area of the current portal that's very popular. So um, the quick launch uh, will be on the left hand side, just like it is now. We're also using the same application icons as are currently used to ease the transition from the old portal to the new portal. Um, some things that will be new is that the quick launch applications will be organized by category. Um, so uh, and you can choose to expand or collapse each category as you're um, looking through the list of applications uh, to find the ones you're interested in. Also, each application has a little star next to it. Um, if you click the star, then it becomes one of your favorites and you can use the favorites only toggle to display or hide um, just your favorites or all of the quick launch, link, quick launch applications. So this allows you to uh, pick and choose the ones that you use regularly and then hide the rest of the clutter for the quick launch applications that have been shared with you but you don't actually use on a regular basis. Um, lastly, uh, for the quick launch applications, if you hover over uh, one of the applications, uh, you'll get a little pop-up message, a little hover message that will provide you with more information about what that quick launch application does. Um, if you click on it, what it'll lead you to. So if you're uh, newer to the university or if a new quick launch application uh, is launched, you can more easily figure out what it's used for um, before you click on it. And then uh, the last thing I'll mention is the quick launch, uh, just like the navigation, is audience targeted. So um, when you go into the portal homepage, you might have a different uh, list of um, uh, applications in your quick launch than um, a colleague or someone from another uh, division or role at the university. Um, so there is um, a level of personalization because of your, um, you know, what group uh, or role you're affiliated with in the quick launch. Um, we're, uh, we also have the capability, uh, similar to the current portal, for users to register their own links. Um, we call this the My Links feature. And this allows you to um, add your own um, buttons into the quick launch. So if there are websites or web applications that you use on a regular basis um, that you want to have on the same page when you go to access the quick launch, you can register them with the title and the URL and they'll show up in your quick launch, your My Links section of the quick launch. Uh, next up is the news. Um, on the main uh, page of the portal uh, towards the top right, you'll have your recent news um, block. And the recent news shows you the most recent articles posted uh, by uh, the colleges and divisions that are participating in the portal. Uh, we're gonna start out with the, the groups that are currently posting news on the portal, 
And then after the first release, we're going to um, engage with other groups that um, have not been sharing news on the portal to date and um, see if they want to start sharing news through the portal as well. But every news article uh, will have, uh, at a minimum, will have a headline and a, a short description that you can click on. Um, there's also the capability for the person who's uh, authoring the news article to include a thumbnail image uh, to add a little visual pizzazz to the homepage. And then um, at any point, uh, if a news article has aged off of the homepage, uh, you can still go see that article by clicking on the see all link on the, uh, the featured news section, and that'll bring you to an archive, a, searchable, a searchable archive of all the news that has been posted uh, through the portal to date. Um, so this will keep the homepage um, relatively uncluttered. You'll always see four or five most recent news articles, but you won't lose access to the older news if you need to reference back to it at some point. Um, the last thing to say about the news is just like the navigation and the quick launch, uh, news articles can also be audience targeted. So there might be some news uh, that's only shared uh, with staff or with faculty or with students or uh, people from a specific college or division, or the news articles might be shared uh, broadly with uh, everybody that can log into the portal. It'll be up to the news author to decide what audience they're sharing uh, that news post with. So as you scroll down the homepage of the new portal, um, the next section you'll come to um, uh, after the quick launch and the news is the My Frequent Sites section. And this will show you the SharePoint and Teams sites that you have most recently interacted with. Um, up to six uh, will show in the um, in the block. And this gives you a, a way to quickly uh, join back in uh, with a group or department or team that you've been collaborating with um, to get back to that site really quickly. And then lastly on the page, uh, we're including uh, three Twitter feeds on the main uh, portal homepage. It's going to be the Cal State LA, the My Cal State LA, and the LA Golden Eagles. Um, and so you can use the portal homepage as a way to quickly check up on news posted through social media, um, as well as the news that's that's been shared uh, by the division and departments up above. Um, you know, if you if you're not in Twitter that often, uh, this is a, a good way to keep up to date on what the university is uh, saying to uh, you know the general public. All right, so those are the main features that will be on the new uh, portal homepage when it launches. Um, our schedule uh, for the next few weeks is um, now through March 26, we are working with the content authors who are going to be creating news during um, the first launch. So these are groups that have already been creating news to put on the current My Cal State LA portal. We're gonna get them set up uh, to start create, creating news on the new portal and make sure we have some content in the portal for when we launch. We don't want an empty news feed um, on the first day that folks start accessing the new portal. Um, as mentioned, we're going, we're planning on launching both the new portal and the SSO uh, or the single sign-on um, authentication change. Uh, the week of spring break. Um, so at some point during that week, you'll start to see traffic to My Cal State LA, uh, that, that uh, website URL be redirected to the new portal. And then after launch, um, April and ongoing, uh, we will be onboarding additional colleges and divisions to share their content and news through the portal. We'll also be collecting feedback um, as, as people start to use the portal about what they like, what they don't like, what new requests and ideas they have. And we'll be implementing new features from that feedback and also um, requirements um, and ideas from the original assessment project. If you guys have any questions um, after this presentation, uh, you are welcome to reach out to the ITS help desk and let them know that you have a question about the new portal or the new My Cal State LA, um, and they will for forward that to our team. 
Um, so you can reach them by phone, by email, or the ITAS uh, portal website. I want to thank everybody again for joining us. Some of what we're working on is still in development, so it's a little bit early. And I have reached out to different areas on campus to schedule the content training. Um, so if you think that um, your area has a need to be able to post news or announcements to the portal and um, you haven't been contacted for the training, you can email me or you can contact the help desk and we'll take a look at it and we'll, we'll get you included. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon.